Did you know that the Pleistocene era was a really important time in Earth's history? It's when the last ice age happened and glaciers covered a lot of the planet. This period of time lasted for about 2.6 million years and ended around 11,700 years ago. What's even cooler is that modern humans, like us, had actually evolved during this time and had spread all over Earth before it ended. There were also some really fascinating animals that lived during the Pleistocene, like woolly mammoths and saber-toothed cats. Unfortunately, many of them went extinct at the end of this era. Earth has had some pretty wild weather patterns over the last 2.4 billion years. Although the planet is mostly ice-free, we now cycle in and out of freezing ice ages. During these glacial periods, temperatures drop and huge areas of the planet get covered in ice. It all starts with a bit of snow, which then builds up over time. The ice reflects sunlight, making things even cooler. The result? Vast glaciers that slowly move toward the equator, changing the landscape as they go. And when the ice melts, sea levels rise again, and everything changes all over again. In total, there have been at least five ice ages so far. The first one was so intense that the whole planet turned into a huge snowball. Right now, we're actually in the middle of an ice age, but we're currently in a temporary warm spell that started around 11,000 years ago. These warm periods are called interglacials, and we're not quite sure how long they last. There are still massive ice sheets covering Antarctica and Greenland that hold 75% of Earth's fresh water. When these finally melt, it'll mark the end of the current ice age. Earth's temperature is affected by something called the Milankovitch cycles. Basically, the amount of heat we receive from the sun changes over years, decades, decades, and millennia because of Earth's orbit, tilt, and axis angle. There are three different patterns to these cycles. The first is called eccentricity, which is all about the shape of our orbit. The second is obliquity, which has to do with the tilt of the Earth. And the third is precession, which is like a wobble as Earth spins. Depending on where we are in these cycles, we might experience colder or warmer temperatures. But other things, like the position of continents and the atmosphere, also play a role in our planet's fate. For example, our planet's orbit is not quite circular. It's actually a bit elongated, shaped almost like an egg. That means we're sometimes a little closer or farther from the sun, depending on the time of year. We call the point farthest away from the sun the apogee, and the closest point is the perigee. When we're at the apogee, we're moving away from the sun, but gravity eventually pulls us back toward it. This means our orbit changes a little each time, gradually shifting our position relative to the sun. Don't worry, even though the orbit changes over thousands of years, it doesn't have a big impact on our day-to-day -day lives. Changes in Earth's orbit can affect how much sunlight we get during the summer. This means that ice sheets in the northern hemisphere will melt less, and over time, they actually start to grow. As they grow, they reflect even more sunlight, which makes the climate even cooler and spreads the ice even farther. This process can last for a really long time, like 10,000 to 20,000 years, and eventually it brings the planet into its next freezing season. As for the next ice age, scientists believe it might be postponed indefinitely. They've found that our human interaction with the environment, like the use of fuels, could delay the next ice age by up to 100,000 years. Earth's past ice ages were linked to the amount of solar radiation and carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere, and this research can even help us predict future cycles. It's amazing to think that our actions now could affect Earth's future for thousands of years to come. And while it's not really important when the next ice age begins, it's pretty cool to know that humans have the power to shape the future on a geological timescale. Ice ages have had a huge impact on our planet and human civilization. 
So it's fascinating to think how our actions now might change things, maybe even for the better. What did life look like on our planet during the last ice age, though? Well, North America, for instance, was home to some huge creatures. Mammoths, saber-toothed cats, giant ground sloths, and mastodons were just a few of them. And get this, even Europe had an 11-foot-tall flightless bird that weighed almost as much as a polar bear. Meanwhile, down under in Australia, there was a giant lizard that lived in all sorts of habitats during the same time period. Even though some animals from the Pleistocene era aren't around anymore, you might recognize many of those that are still around today. In Alaska, for example, you can still find brown bears, caribou, and wolves. People just like us actually lived through the Ice Age, too. Our species, Homo sapiens, has been around for about 300,000 years. And we've spread all around the world since then. Some of our ancestors stayed in Africa during the Ice Age and didn't feel the full effects of the cold. And others ventured out into other parts of the world, even into the chilly glacial environments of Europe. Our early relatives, like the Neanderthals in Europe, and the mysterious Denisovians in Asia were also around during this time. Although they seem to have gone extinct before the end of the Ice Age, it's pretty amazing to think about all those different hominids that roamed Earth during that period. What's also fascinating is how our species managed to survive the Ice Age, while some of our cousins didn't. Some experts believe that our adaptability, social and communication skills, and the use of tools played a huge role in it. And guess what? Humans didn't just hunker down during that time. We actually moved into new areas. Fossilized footprints found at White Sands National Park in New Mexico prove that humans have been in North America since at least 23,000 years ago. That's close to the peak of the last ice age. While a full-blown ice age might still be far away, there is a possibility of a mini ice age coming our way. Some scientists believe that in about 10 years, we might experience a significant drop in solar activity, leading to colder temperatures in the northern hemisphere. This could result in conditions similar to the Little Ice Age in the late 17th century, when the Thames River in the UK froze over. While scientists aren't quite sure what caused that cooling, it's fascinating to think about the potential changes. We've done it before, so we know that humans will most likely survive the next real ice age, even if we don't manage to figure out a way to stop the next freezing era. But it would come at a high cost. All the ice that would cover most of the northern hemisphere would have to come from oceans, which would cause the sea level to drop. This could mean more land for some countries, but it would also create other problems. Sea levels going down might seem like a great thing at first, but actually, it could lead to some challenges. Having been covered with salt water for thousands of years, the new land might not be very fertile. This means it wouldn't be great for growing crops, and we'd have to find other ways to feed ourselves. Back when humans first started out, there weren't many of us, and there was plenty of food. Now, with over 7 billion people on the planet, it's a different story. We'll need to be resourceful to make sure everyone has enough food to eat. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.